Well, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another round of I do something with with some tech and in today's video we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing um, a bit of an upgrade to a server or actually just a upgrade to get a server up and running um, this is gonna be a video that's gonna be shot over multiple days so if wardrobe changes happen don't be surprised and also don't be surprised if the video is pretty long um, yeah cuz it's gonna be a bit of a thing um, I'm hoping to have, the, hopefully, and unfortunately this is being kind of shot in real time, so I'm not too sure about some of the specifics of this video, but I'm going to say that this is going to be the Christmas special. Um, that's not related to Christmas at all, but you know what? I'm going to roll with it. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so if you've been following the channel recently, you kind of know, or if you've been kind of picking up some things, you may know that I am an absolute massive nerd. And one of the things that makes me an absolute massive nerd is the fact that I actually have my own server um, that I run, that I kind of use for a lot of my daily life. Um, I have, um, you know, I have a server which is basically just a Raspberry Pi, which I use for um, handling the for handling a Nextcloud installation that I run, because you know I've I kind of found out about Nextcloud, and I'm like I could totally work with that, and yeah, um, yeah, and I use Nextcloud because I've got a lot of external hard drives lying around, and you know I'd rather have my own cloud than than have it have it in some other computer that I don't know where it is, um, you know I'd rather have it right where I am. So so with that, um, yeah. Unfortunately, though, it's kind of recent that I got into Nextcloud, and um, only getting into it like, like oh, I don't know, over the summer, really. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So, unfortunately, one big problem with that is that I've been running it on a Raspberry Pi. Now, if you know anything about Raspberry Pi, um, specifically the model that I use, which is the, the Raspberry Pi 3B, which is really dating it, um, you may realize that. <laughs> It's it's going on. It's getting on for age, and it's um, and with that, it's just it's just becoming it's becoming a bit worse. You know, it's kind of it, it runs in Xcloud slowly, and on larger file uploads, I tend to have a problem where it gets to the end of the upload, and then in, um, because an Xcloud likes to chunk um, the file uploads just to make it easier to stream it like later on when you're going to download it. Um, yeah, it, it goes, it gets through the process, but unfortunately it goes through it so slowly that um, what happens is that it does what's called a, what is considered a 502 error, which means that basically it, it basically means that the server timed out somewhere. Most notably that's because Nextcloud is very PHP based, and if you know anything about that programming language, it's it works only on the server. You know, it does all the code runs on the server instead of on the computer that's supposed to be the target for it. Um, but anyways, with that being said, that's kind of uh, kind of the expanded notes of what's going on. Might be might have cut some of it out in the actual edit. But anyways, um, so yeah, so I've so long story short. I've needed a, I've needed an updated, I've needed to get a new server, and um, although I, it had been working fine, you know, not being reliable and having issues with using USB drives or strictly USB drives, it's, yeah, it's getting annoying. And um, luckily, though, um, if you've been following the channel, also you may have, you may have um, stumbled upon a video that I did about a year or two ago where I took some laptops that I was given from an e-waste pile at, the, at my dad's office um, and I put an SSD into I put some SSDs into them and installed Linux on the things um, yeah and they're still in use to this day um, you know they're perfectly although they're very very slow laptops and only really good for very 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 small things they're basically like Chromebooks but still they're they're okay enough um, you know um, but yeah, but um, so the same e-waste pile um, happened to have um, more server-like computers. They had, there were, um, yeah, it was it's clean-out season again, um, at least a few weeks ago. So um, 
it was clean out season for the um, e-waste pile and in that e-waste pile were these things that are kind of like servers and you'll be seeing this um, later on in t um, when, we, when we go into the actual part of this video where we're going to be doing most of the repair and I'll be going into more about what these computers actually are and what the server really is as a thing and why I'm using them as a server and you'll soon see why um, but yeah um, so my dad brought home like these things and I'm like that's gonna be a good server and um, yeah so now it's slated to be used as my next cloud server my new next cloud server but before I do I want to get it up to spec for next cloud and over this video you'll be seeing all the upgrades that I'm gonna be doing to basically fill the role that my Raspberry Pi has been doing but but ten times or at least X times much faster um, you know it's gonna be a this is gonna be kind of the you know kind of the best we can get really and yeah so um, so in today's or at least in this portion of this video um, we're gonna be getting some new RAM in it um, so this thing's from 2013 2012 so I have so it runs on DDR3 RAM um, yeah it has 8 gigs in it currently but I'm gonna max that out to 32 because the motherboard can do 32 gigs of RAM of DDR3 that is um, and yeah and without further ado, let's actually get into it and get into the backstory of this machine. All right, so I've moved this thing to um, a place where I can actually get it in shot and make it part of the shot and where we're gonna be doing our little um, repair job today. And yeah, this is it. Um, now, we'll start off with the backstory because it's, uh, because it's a bit of a thing. Um, Mostly to note, um, I must draw your attention to um, this logo. Now, what's interesting is that, um, in fact, it's been, in fact, this time I'd say I'm, I've been a bit disingenuous because I've been calling it a server, um, even though that's kind of the intended use case that I'm going to be giving it, even though it's been um, decommissioned um, uh, for its original. So, if you look at the logo down here and go to the do five seconds of Google and go to the website and and I'll kind of pop this up in editing later you'll see that this company that's made by a company called Q's and um, if you if you work in an industry where you're doing um, like drainage inspection and surveying or it, the name may ring a bell to you because they're they're a company that makes these um, robots and these camera truck things where you, you you know, you have a robot, it goes down into the sewer and it can, it can take pictures of things that happen in there. And um, yeah, and they make machines that, um, yeah, that do just that. Um, so yeah, this is actually, so this is um, a machine. This was actually the um, computer that was used to control it. And um, yeah, you'll, and yeah. And for some reason, um, if I, and I'm gonna kind of cut to a, an image of the little sticker that's inside the door here. That's kind of out of, it's kind of not really in view all that much. Um, you'll kind of see that there's a sticker on it that that actually made it really interesting for me. Um, is, um, yeah, uh, mostly the first line of it. Um, the other stuff below it is kind of not really the most relevant to what made me intrigued. Um, well, it said computer with Windows 7 i7 G2, which could probably mean Intel Core i7 Generation 2, which means, you know, second gen Core i7, which is a pretty okay, which is a pretty high end CPU for the day it came out, you know. Um, yeah, in fact, it's a sticker that's actually repeated on the inside. And um, yeah, um, so, you know, Core i7 from that era. It's a pretty good, um, pretty good combination. It's got a nice little card reader and DVD drive, but yeah, um, but yeah, that kind of solidifies the whole fact of well, what it's been, what it is, what it does, how it does it, and yeah. Um, so it's a very interesting machine, and you know, it's so yeah. Now, um, yeah, so um, aside from that, it has eight gigs of RAM, and um, yeah. Behind here, um, going into the front panel, I mean, look at that front panel. I kind of 
can't gloss over that because you know you got your, you know, your two hard drive um, power supply A, power supply B, hard drive one and two, fault for power supply, fan temperature one, temperature two, and reset. Um, so yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, and another thing about this that I kind of want to go over is um, the fact that it used is that the hard drives were removed from this thing. So I. So the hard drive that it's kind of in use for this is um, one from my own little collection, which is a little laptop drive that I had. Um, it was a with a 500 gig um, capacity, so it's kind of not the greatest. It's definitely not the 240 gig SSD in this thing that this thing used to have in it before before I got it, because you know, you know, the people who were thinking really, you know. Because, you know, good data security starts with removing the hard drives from everything, and yeah. So, um, without further ado, um, we'll also, let's head inside of it, and um, also see why I was pretty intrigued by it. Alright, so, here we are inside of the machine itself, and um, yeah, you'll also see something that's kind of interesting about it. Um, yeah, so... When it was built around 2011-2012, um, this thing was pretty insane for when it was built. Um, you know, aside from the fact that it has a 240-gig SSD in it and a bunch of other stuff, this is a pretty insane machine, um, um, and especially the motherboard. Um, it uses an ASUS PB277V or Z77V. I forget what it is. It's I have the manual for it. And looking at it, doing the, again, five seconds of Googling, um, this is a pretty top-of-the-line motherboard for the thing back in the day. Um, you know, especially, um, yeah. And even on used markets like eBay, for some reason, this exact board goes for about 250 to $500. Just the motherboard alone. No CPU installed, no RAM installed, no nothing on it. Just, just the motherboard, yeah. And, um, yeah, also behind the here is the power supply, which is a Cooler Master 1000 watt power supply, which from that era is pretty insane. Um, it's a semi-modular with, um, with the PCI, or actually, no, just the power, with some of the basic power supply stuff kind of just hanging out here. Um, yeah, and you can see where some of the drives that were removed came from. Um, you know, there's uh, the um, hanging SATA connectors, which I'm going to make use of when I do, when I get the two drives, when I'm going to get the whole bunch of drives that I'm getting for this thing. Um, so yeah, now what we're really here for today, which is unfortunately kind of off camera, is RAM. Um, so this thing has 8 gigs of RAM of the Corsair, I think it's the, the Corsair Dominator a DDR3 version of RAM. Um, one of them had their plastic, had the plastic um, sadly removed, and this is the DDR3 2012 variant. And yeah, now I'm a bit concerned because it's a 1600, it's a I think it's 1333 megahertz RAM, which is the maximum this motherboard supports. But I'm putting in 1600, but in pra in past experience, it's. Um, Motherboard's always been able to just underclock it, and 1600 is more of the maximum it can handle rather than anything else. But anyways, um, so yeah, uh, this this motherboard, yeah, it's got all the, you know, it's, you know, being, I'm surprised that despite being a motherboard with all the bells and whistles, doesn't, doesn't do anything faster, but I guess considering the time period, I guess that checks out. Um, so yeah, also this is one of the first motherboards to have what I would describe as like a kind of a modern day click BIOS type thing like you'd see on a lot of um, newer ones. Like you can actually use the BIOS on this thing with a mouse and keyboard, which for a lot of others during this time period is kind of hard even though UEFI has existed for that long. Um, but yeah. So look at the way this thing. Um, yeah, the manual shows it as being ones where you have to, where you just have to remove one side and it kind of appears to be a true seal. Um, yeah, because the RAM doesn't really turn out elsewhere. Oh, that's horrible. Ain't that funny. So the RAM clip on this is busted. Oh. Oh boy. Oh, I got one of the sticks out. Yeah, it's Corsair Vengeance. 
Unfortunately though, the plastics on this board are starting to get brittle because there's the there's the RAM slot whole thing. Alright, there we go. Bit of work. Um, I was able to get the um, connector out. Um, yeah, that's a bit concerning. But, you know, with the age of these things, yeah, I wasn't putting too much force onto it, but yeah, it's not the greatest. Um, as it is, I don't think it's necessary, provided that I seat the RAM very well. Um, besides, Asus only has one on, has another one on the other side that they don't really, yeah, they just have just there. Um, usually RAM should be able to work. This thing's not going to be moving all that much. It's just going to be kind of sitting there and um, yeah, you know, it's just a matter of getting the new RAM in. all the RAM we can get it's all seated as best as I can get it so there we go now you've gone from 8 to 32 gigs of RAM hopefully um, so let me just get this plugged into HDMI and um, yeah we're gonna see if this actually has 32 gigs of RAM installed let's power it up and of course it's a very loud machine so I'm gonna kind of move the camera back a bit Anyways, let's run Neo Fetch, because, you know, every Linux user's got to use that, and look at that! 32142 megabytes, there we go, that's 32 gigs of RAM. So, there we go, we're running, we're running perfect, you know, that is absolutely great, and yeah, there's the specs for this thing. I will say, that is a pretty good little machine um, for that, um, yeah. Alright, so um, this video is kind of going to continue when I get on to the next thing, which will be um, when I get my um, SSD and hard drive in, which will be pretty good, because, you know, we need that. Um, anyways, let's get the server back down and kind of in its little spot, because so I can wait for that and it will be in a nice spot. We're not going to close it up entirely, because, you know, we're going to be doing... We're going to be doing work with it, so yeah. Alright, it's a couple days later. Um, all the drives arrived. Um, there's the SSD and um, this drive, the um, 18 terabyte mechanical drive that we're using for um, the next cloud side of things. And so, yeah. So, here... Yeah, so we're going to get those installed and all that. Um, so, yeah, now luckily with this machine, um, it's easy to just, the entire drive bay comes out, so that's pretty good, because unfortunately otherwise it would be kind of inaccessible, so what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to just disconnect all the power connectors and all the SATA connectors once I get there, and then, there we go, and we're just going to disconnect that and of course I have my temporary drive which I kind of which is kind of not in there right unfortunately it's kind of out of view uh, any further would be a bit insane um, yeah so it just comes out there are three screws here there's this screw here but it's actually just kind of loosely hanging and just doesn't really it kind of doesn't really it it's just kind of loosely hanging there don't know what it's doing but it's probably some kind of stabilization I don't know, I have to really look into that, um, but yeah, um, ideally I should really wait to put a lot of the drives in because I'm planning on filling up one of the, um, one of the five inch bays with, um, the, with a controller box that I think I've kind of talked about this earlier in the video, but basically I'm working on a controller box for the extra lights on in the, on the front panel side of things, because, yeah, we have that. Alright, here we go. 
So that's the drive bay out. Let's go over to the bench and we'll figure it out. All right, so here we are at the bench again. Um, so yeah, what we've got here is um, the drive bay, the SSD, and the hard drive. Now, it's a very, this, this drive bay is actually pretty interesting. Other than the fact that it's actually removable, like you can actually completely remove it from the case itself. Um, but yeah, now, since this thing originally came with SSDs installed, or at least an SSD installed, and I'm just going to start with removing my, my one screw held in um, 500 gig drive that I put in here just for testing purposes. Um, yeah, because, um, yeah. But yeah, not only does it have um, a 3.5 to 2.5 adapter in it, but note the fact that it's that most of the bays in the drive are all, in fact, most of them are um, five inch drives, you know, for full on, for if you have like a CD drive. The only one that isn't, that is a 3.5 mil or 3.5 inch um, jack or drive bay is these two at the at the bottom, or what it would be at the bottom if if it were in its kind of normal form factor. So yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it's a bit gonna be, it's gonna be a bit interesting for airflow purposes, that's for sure. We have everything all together. We have all the drives in. So now we need to clone the data onto the drives. Um, so yeah, to do that, we're gonna use Clonezilla. I have the old drive in the back. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna power it up. And... So now that our new server is basically ready for business, basically, um, we should just get it on to maintenance mode, or at least get the drives out. To do that, we're going to do maintenance mode, which will tell um, Nextcloud to basically stop accepting traffic and stop doing things. Now, I did have um, something lined up. In fact, that's kind of why we're going to maintenance mode, because the disk with the data directory is not there at the moment. Um, all right, so now that our stuff is in the drive and we've kind of put the server on maintenance mode, which is, um, well, it was here, um, we have, you know, since we've already kind of done um, steps one, not exactly finished with step two, but I'll get on with that um, after this. But um, yeah, once you get done with this, I'm just gonna, um, yeah, I'm just going to, um, get, I'm just going to follow these instructions, which is the Nextcloud official instructions on how to move files over to it. going to make a few slight modifications. Since our, um, data folders, our data directory is on an external drive, um, we're going to, we're just going to use Clonezilla again to copy over the contents of the data directory drive to the new to the new um, folder um, I've also got to uh, 
go into Linux for another for another time because I gotta check and see what kind of PHP extensions I installed on the Nextcloud server. I kind of forgot which ones are needed, and um, yeah, I kind of need, and I need to have all of them so then I can go into. It's this way the new server will work flawlessly. And of course I gotta do other things like move over the um, database and copy it over. So yeah, so I'm just gonna kinda leave this on and um, yeah, we're gonna get on with that. In fact, I might even move it to its uh, actual main normal place cause you know, putting stuff there. Um, but yeah, all right, so I'm gonna get on with it and yeah. Alright, so it's been a couple days. Everything's all up and running and yeah. So unfortunately though there's still a lot more to get done with it. Um, for example the thing with the status lights. Um, yeah, I've, I've got to work on that. But unfortunately though, it is the day I have to get this up on YouTube. So and so it's gonna it's, there's gonna be a bit of a part two to this one. Um, yeah. So for now, I guess that's going to be it for today's episode. Uh, if you like what you saw, there's a like button, there's a subscribe button. Um, yeah, this is a random channel, so it's it's usually not the most... I'm usually not the most certain as to what's going to come out, but there is going to be a video that will come out at some point. But yeah, with that being said, that's it for today's video. If you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe. And bye.